Shalom, Yasharala Shalom. This is your Kadash Allah Hayyam coming at you with another quick lesson. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Barakata. Yahweh being the name of our Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days, the Lord of Hosts, the Almighty. And Yahweh Shah being the name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And I have a quick lesson today. And I'm going to just jump right in, man. We should not be envious of these wicked two-thirds or envious of these other nations you know what i'm saying because they end is going to be bitter right you shouldn't be out here worrying about people doing better than you because they serving satan that should be the last thing on your mind and that is a battle within itself you know what i'm saying because sometimes our people have that covetous spirit on them you know what i'm saying where they lusting after things that these wicked people have the devil blessed them with this stuff man they didn't get it from the most high. They didn't get it from the right hand side. You know what I'm saying? Satan hand out blessings too, man. And we got to be able to discern between those that are being rewarded by a dark power and discern between those who are being rewarded for doing the work, the work and the will of the most high. We should not be out here envying nobody, no person, no heathen that's being rewarded by the devil, man. Right, so I'm gonna just jump straight in. I'm gonna jump to the book of um, Sirach, chapter 19. So like it's Sirach chapter nine, in verse, um, Sirach chapter nine, and I'm gonna start at verse 11, and it reads, Envy not the glory of a sinner, for thou knowest not what shall be his end. Right, so envy not the glory of a sinner. What's the glory of the sin of, of a sinner? The fame, you know, being a celebrity, you know, being being honorable amongst this generation, this wicked generation. You know what I'm saying? Envy not the glory of a sinner, man. A lot of sinners out here are being glorified in these last days. You know, you got your whores, your prostitutes, your pimps, you got your celebrities, your basketball players, your rappers, your entertainers. A lot of people are glorifying sinners in these last days. You know, ye worship and know not what ye worship. Our people actually worship these celebrities. Our people actually glorify drug lords and dope dealers, man. We should not be uh, envious of their material gain in this society because the world loves them, man. They are of the world, so the world is going to love them. The world not going to love you. Right. Even though you present in the doctrine of life, the doctrine of Christ, the true wisdom, knowledge and understanding of the Bible, the world don't love that. You know what I'm saying? So don't be envious of a sinner, man. Don't envy a sinner. Envy not the glory of a sinner, for thou knowest not what shall be his end. We don't know how the most high finna judge these people. We don't know what type of torment tactics, you know what I'm saying? Or death traps he have set up in this in this land of darkness in the shadow of death. They're going to step into a death trap. So we shouldn't be envious of these people, no matter how uh, dazzling their lifestyle look. You know what I'm saying? Or how godly their lifestyle se seems to be. Because at the end of the day, gain is not godliness. It don't matter what you got in your bank. You know what I'm saying? Gain is not godliness. Always keep that in mind, right? So um, I'm going to read verse 11 one more time. Envy not the glory of a sinner. Don't envy the glory of a sinner. For thou knowest not what shall be his end, man. That's why you shouldn't envy them. Because the Most High have a special, a special punishment for these people. You know what I'm saying? So let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter 24. Right? I'm going to go to the book of Proverbs chapter 24. And I'm going to start at verse 1. And it reads, Be not envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. Right? So be not envious of evil men. Right? Don't be hating on them. Don't be jealous of them. Don't be covetous after an evil man. And don't desire to be with these people. What fellowship does light have with darkness, man? You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you're around these people and you edifying them, that's one thing. But to just be hanging around these people while they while they engulfed in their wickedness, you don't want to be around these people because when these people get judged, you don't want to be nowhere around these people. Right? You hanging around a wicked, a wicked man that all he do is, you know, sell dope 
That's all he do 24-7 is sell dope. You know what I'm saying? And you hanging around this person. You being lukewarm, you hanging around this person. And this person has enemies. The most I put a death angel on this person. And he shoot up the car some while y'all riding in the car or we y'all standing on the block. The most I put a death angel and kill all y'all just because you're in the presence of this damn demon. You got to be very mindful in these last days, man. He says, be not envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them, right? For their heart study of destruction and their lips talk of mischief, right? Their heart, their mind study of destruction. All they do is watch, you know, uh, rap videos, music videos, you know, uh, documentaries about kingpins, drug dealers. You know what I'm saying? They, st they heart study of destruction because we all know the wages of sin is death, man. So they studying all these sinful acts that's going to lead them to destruction, right? We should not be envious of these people. They, they don't have no knowledge of the most high, right? Just because they drive a fancy car, just because they have a big house. You know what I'm saying? Envy not these people, man. Envy not the sinner. Right? It says, verse 2 again, for their heart study of destruction and their lips talk of mischief. All they mouth, all they have in their mouth is mischievous things, man. Mischief. All they do is speak mischief. All they speak is about, oh, where the hoes at? You know what I'm saying? Where the drugs at? You know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't speak, they don't have the law of the Lord in their heart. They don't keep the law in their mouth, man. They don't speak the oracles of God. They speak the oracles of Satan. Corrupt communication, evil communication, man. And their lips talk of mischief. That's evil communication. That's corrupt communication. Nothing that they're telling you is profitable to your spirit and to your salvation. Nothing. You know what I'm saying? I find myself now, I can't really be around ungodly people, man, because their conversations are on such a low level. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? I cannot bear to stand around worldly people. You know, unless I'm edifying them. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just finna go hang out with a wicked man so I can get pursued or tempted into doing something wicked, man. I'm better than that. Right? So let's go to um the book of First Peter, chapter 3 and verse 17. The book of First Peter, chapter 3, in verse 17, and it reads. This is 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 17, and it reads, For it is better if the will of the Most High be so that ye suffer well doing than for evil doing, right? So it's better to suffer for well doing than for evil doing in these last days. You, you want to suffer. You know, suffer goes into that word, be patient. You know what I'm saying? You want to be patient for well doing than for your evil doing, man. You know what I'm saying? You want, you want to endure inflictions for doing well. For pleasing the most high. You know, you want to have your family mad at you because you're not celebrating these pagan traditions. You want to have people envious of you because you're following the ways of the Lord. You're walking in the light of the Lord. That's why you want to suffer for doing well. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to, you don't want to um you don't want to suffer for doing evil, man. Because it's a different, it's a whole different feeling. It's a different vibe, it's a different spirit, it's a different lesson. You know what I'm saying? The lesson is different because this person is being punished. He's going through these trials and tribulations because he is serving sin, man. He's serving the devil. He's walking contrary to the Most High, or she's walking contrary to the Most High. So her suffering is different. She's being punished for her iniquities, her sins. You know what I'm saying? Whether you have this person on the right-hand side, you know, that's following the ways of the Lord, and they're being afflicted for doing well, man. The devil harassing them for doing well. The devil making war with you because you are doing things that are pleasing to the Heavenly Father. So like it, you are reading. You are walking in his ways. You are following his law, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability. Right? So it's better to get, you know, it's better to uh, suffer from doing well than to suffer from doing evil, man. And a lot of people don't understand that, right? Let me get the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3. So like it, bear with me. Second Timothy chapter two, and we're gonna start at verse three, right? Second Timothy chapter two and verse three. 
And it reads, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, and it reads, Thou therefore endure hardness, right? And that word endure goes into uh, patiently suffer. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Hamashiach Yahweh You endure those afflictions for doing well. You know what I'm saying? You endure that tribulation that come to you for doing well. You know what I'm saying? He's not speaking of those that are doing evil and doing wickedly because our afflictions are two different things. Our suffering are on two different levels. You know what I'm saying? You got to understand that you are being persecuted for doing the will of the Lord instead of being persecuted for doing the will of Satan. Right? You got to understand that. Right? So he said, um, verse 3 again, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3, and it reads, Therefore endure hardness. As a good soldier of Hamashiach Yahushai, no man that warth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier, man. No man that warth entangles himself with the affairs of this life. What's the affairs of this life, man? Uh, celebrity worship, entertainment, you know what I'm saying? Being covetous, watching these rappers and entertainers and trying to be like them. You're not entangling yourself with the affairs of this world. You're more focused on being a good soldier of Hamashiach Yahushua. Doing the will of the Father, man. Delighting in his will. You know what I'm saying? You have no time to really be envious of worldly people. It makes no sense. You know you have to pray those spirits off you. That covetous spirit. You envying evil men, man. Wanting what they have. Oh, why the Lord ain't blessing me with what these, these niggas out here sinning, selling dope, pimping, robbing. You know what I'm saying? The Lord blessing them. You got you to gotta suffer patiently, man. That's what endurance is, to suffer patiently. Your reward is great at the end. You get the promises, the covenants, the glory of the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? That should be your main focus. That should be your main drive, man. Your first works, man. Focus on that, right? Verse 5, and it reads, If a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully, man. So you got to suffer for doing well. You got to strive lawfully in these last days. Temptations, man. He said, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptations. That's a part of temptations, man. Seeing what the wicked have and desiring it. You must rebuke that. You must correct that within yourself. You must meditate on scriptures so you don't be consumed about consumed um, by that thought process, by that mindset. Right? So let me go to the book of Psalms, chapter 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 1, man. We see a lot of evil people get blessed by Satan in this life, man. But just don't be persuaded and, 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 and don't be simple and fall victim or fall into what these evil people have and what they got. You know what I'm saying? Focus on what the Most High is doing for you in your life, man. What he delivered you from. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a challenging thing serving the Most High, man, in this world full of evil. Right? So um, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 1. And I'm going to start at verse 1, man. And it reads, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So blessed is the man, rewarded is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, man, in the counsel of the unwicked, of, of the um, selaki, of the wicked. You blessed when you don't sit in the counsel of the wicked, in their conversations, in their deeds, man. You are blessed. Give the Most High all praise, honor, and glory for that. You know what I'm saying? Verse 2. But his delight is in the law of Yahweh, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. That's how you get them demons off you. That's how you get that covetous spirit off you. That's how you get that envy off you. You know what I'm saying? Because you meditate in the law day and night, man. Right? And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in season. His leaf also shall not weather. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper, right? So when you stick to these law, statutes, and commandments, whatever you do in this life, you're going to prosper. You're going to prosper, man. You know what I'm saying? Because you're so fixated on the Lord. You're so focused 
on keeping his law, statutes, and commandments in the faith in Christ, man. You so focused on the kingdom. Nothing, nothing of this world can satisfy you. Nothing of this world is pleasing to you. You know what I'm saying? These, these people in the world that are worldly, that are that are um, working on the left hand side, working for Satan, they get houses, they get cars, they get clothes. You know what I'm saying? We gonna get a whole piece of land to rule over, man. We gonna get a whole nation of people to rule over, multiple nations of people to rule over, man. That outweighs what this wicked person have. You know what I'm saying? We're going to sit on the throne with Christ, man. That's something to look forward to. That's something to uh, marvel about, man. Not to be envious of no damn demon, man. Right? We're supposed to be fixated on these law, statutes, and commandments so our ways can be prosperous. Right? Uh, Psalm chapter 1 and verse 4, and it reads, The ungodly are not so, but are like a shaft which the wind driveth away. You know what I'm saying? A shaft is like a, you know, a plant out the ground that's easily, you know, that the um, leaves or seeds easily fly off with the wind. That's what the that's what the uh, the wicked man is like. That's what the ungodly people are like. You know what I'm saying? They just going to blow away with the wind, blow away with the doctrines, the philosophies of America. They're going to be gone. They're going to be nothing, man. So don't be envious of these people. Verse 5. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Right? Verse 6. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Just like I said, man. Just like the script said. They shall be blown like the shaft in the wind. They're going to perish. They're going to be out of here. They're going to get put to death. You know what I'm saying? So that is their bitter end. You worry about your, your sweet end and you leave their bitter end alone. Don't even think about that. You just know that the Most High is going to torment them, going to punish them. You know what I'm saying? For the wages of sin is death and these are sinners. They're not trying to repent. They're going hard for Satan. So you should be going hard for the Most High. Right? So let's go to the book of Sirach. In the Apocrypha. Sirach chapter 20. And I'm going to start at verse. This is the book of Sirach chapter 20. I'm going to start at verse 9 and it reads. There is a sinner that have good success in evil things. And there is a gain that turn to loss. So these sinners that have good success in evil things like these entertainers, these rappers, your, 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 your local neighborhood dope man. Your local neighborhood pimp player, your local neighborhood jack boy, he have good success in evil things, right? And there is a gain that turns to loss. Like the most I said, man, the wicked is the ungodly is gonna be blowed like shaft in the wind, man. They're gonna perish. That's a that's a that's a profit that turned to loss, man. And there is a gain that turned to loss. They gained all these things, they stored up their riches here on earth. But they didn't store no riches up in heaven, man. That's a gain that's gonna turn to loss, man. You can't, they can't, they can't take none of this stuff with them. Only their spirit when they go back to the spirit world. You know what I'm saying? And then even, even then when they get back to the spirit world, ain't no telling what kind of punishments the most I have lined up for these people. Just know it's horrible, it's horrific, it's terrible. You know what I'm saying? So envy not the wicked ones, man. Yes, they're going to have good success in evil things. Yes, they're going to drive the nicest cars. They're going to have the biggest houses. But they're not walking with the Lord, man. Neither do they like to retain them, retain him in their knowledge. But you do. You know what I'm saying? Be happy for that. Happy is, happy is he that keep the law, man. Be happy that you keeping these laws. Envy not the wicked, man, in these last days. Don't envy the wicked, right? So I'm going to jump to second edges. Second edges chapter 9. And I'm going to start at verse 9. And it reads. Let me see. Yeah, verse 9. Second edges chapter 9 and verse 9. And it reads. Then shall they be in pitiful case. Which now have abused my ways. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments man these people are the the, the wicked 
they are abusing the ways of the Most High, man. They are abusing his ways. They taking life for granted. They not giving him thanks. They not reverencing him or his only begotten son. They abusing the ways of the Heavenly Father, just being in gross darkness. He says, um, they shall dwell in torments. That's their punishment. That's their judgment. They're going to dwell in torments. Yeah, they have nice cars, clothes, and all these material things, but they're dwelling in torments. You know what I'm saying? They, they spirit is on fire, like hell fire. You know, not in fire for the Lord, not, in fi not on fire for the truth, but they, they on fire for the wickedness, man. They happy to go commit these abominations. They happy to commit these unlawful sex acts. You know what I'm saying? They happy to get riches, you know, in an ungodly fashion. They happy for that. But in the end, man, they're going to be tormented. Right? Verse 10. For as such in their life have received benefits and have not known me, man. They receive all this type of luxury. You know what I'm saying? All this material gain and wealth, man. But they have not known the Lord. They don't have all type of benefits. That's why I'm saying the devil or Satan, he give you blessings as well for doing his will. You know what I'm saying? For being lawless, man. The devil give you blessings as well. You got to be able to discern between the two, man. Does this, this man or woman speak the oracles of God or they speak in the oracles of Satan? Evil communications. Is this person really following Christ or this person really following the multitude to do evil? You know what I'm saying? You really got to ask yourself that. Right? For as such in their life, verse 10 again, for as such in their life have received benefits and have not known me. How you know the most high? How is the most high known? So like it. How is the most high known? The most high is known by his judgments, man. And they have not known his judgments. You know what I'm saying? But they will know in the end. Right? Verse 11, and it reads, and they have loathed my law. While, while they had yet liberty and when was that place of repentance was open unto them understood not but despised it so we going out on the highways and byways and teaching our people you know we going to these slums these ghettos teaching our people man in the chief place of concourse but they not hearkening man we telling them to repent they not listening to the Lord he said they ain't gonna listen to you cause they won't listen to me man they not gonna repent just cause you tell them to repent I'm telling them to repent on a daily basis. They not doing it. You know what I'm saying? And he said they despise it. They despise this word. They despise this truth, man. Verse, verse 12. The same must know after death by pain. So that's their bitter end, man. They're going to know after death by pain. Since they're not hearkening. You know, since they don't want to repent. Since they want to continue to benefit. You know, receive benefits and have not known the Lord. They're going to know after death by pain. You know what I'm saying? That's the harsh reality of it. You know what I'm saying? So let me jump to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Shalakia. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. And verse, I'm going to start at verse 11, right? And it reads, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11 and it reads because sentence against evil work is not executed speedily therefore the heart of the sons of man is fully set in them to do evil man that's why they won't repent you know what I'm saying that's why they feel like ain't nothing wrong because they haven't been judgment haven't been executed on them speedily so they feel like they getting away with everything they doing you know what I'm saying they feel like they getting away with you know, being a murderer, not loving their neighbor, not loving their brother, man. They think they're getting away with these things. They think they're getting away with selling witchcraft to the streets, with uh, pharmaceuticals, you know, selling our people witchcraft, man. They think they're getting away with that. You know what I'm saying? Because judgment is not executed speedily, it's fully set in their heart to do evil, man. You know, and that's a stronghold on our people. Because they don't know the judgments of the Most High. They don't know when they're being afflicted. You know what I'm saying? They don't know when they're going through punishment or sufferings. They don't even recognize it. And if they don't recognize that, they definitely don't recognize the miracles or the grace he showed them. You know, they they completely oblivious to that. Right? So let me get the book of uh, 2 Corinthians 
chapter 4 and verse 4. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. And it reads, I'm going to start at verse 3, right? Matter of fact, I'm going to start at verse 4. And it reads, Salakia. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and I'm going to start at verse 1. And it reads, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry and we have received mercy, we faint not, man. We faint not. That means not to be utterly spiritless, man. We're not going to be utterly spiritless out here. We, we ain't going to faint. We're going to keep the spirit. We're going to stay on fire for this truth. Verse 2, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of the Most High deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, condemning commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of the most high man we putting away that old man you know what i'm saying we not we not leaning on our own, own understanding in these last days we commending ourselves with the knowledge of the most high right commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of the most high verse three but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost man that's why they won't repent because the gospel is hid unto them because they are lost man Verse four, and whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, of Hamashiach Yehoshua, who is the image of the Most High, who should shine upon them, so like it, should shine unto them, right? So the God of this world have blinded our people. That's why they won't repent. You know what I'm saying? That's why they feel like the lord is blessing them but really the devil blessing them man that's why you see on the um bt awards you see these rappers make dumbass songs glorifying wickedness and then when they win the award they go and thank the most high that they done made a million dollars off this record to to poison the minds of the youth man you know what i'm saying the god of this world has blinded them they think this the uh the all the all be all, you know what I'm saying? They think this the final destination. And they living like it. Cause they encouraging our youth to, to follow their lead and want to go up on camera and thank the most high for all this abominations and all this wickedness and all these songs of fools that they've been putting out. You know what I'm saying? So we really gotta wake up in these last days, man. Blinding, so like it, verse 4 again. And whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. We know we believe because we keep the law, statutes, and commandments. And we know who don't believe because they're not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Your works is your face. Your, your works is performance of the law. Right? Least the light of the glory of the glorious gospel of Hamashiach Yahushua, who is the image of the Most High, should shine unto them. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to shine the light on them so they don't be blinded by the God of this world, man. And turn back to their true power, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Holy One of Israel, right? So let me get 2nd Edges, chapter 15, verse 1. Chapter 15, and I'm going to start at verse 1, and it reads, because we got to shine our light before men, right? Second Edges chapter 15 and verse 1 and it reads, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, said the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee, and let not the incredulity of them that speak against thee. So like it. Read verse 3 again. Fear not the imaginations against thee, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Fear not the imaginations against you, man. When you starting to become envious of a wicked person, rebuke that, correct that, man. Confront that thought, that imagination, man. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Only fear the heavenly father. And let not the incredulity of them trouble thee. The incredulity is the unbelief, man. Don't let the unbelief of these people trouble you. They believe not. The God of this world has blinded them, so they believe not, man. Don't let their unbelief trouble you, right? Verse 4, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. You know what I'm saying? All these people that, un 
that are unfaithful to the heavenly father, they're going to die in their unfaithfulness, man, because we in a contract, we in a covenant, we in a marriage with the heavenly father. And these people out here serving sin, they serving Satan. So all those that are doing that, you know, they're going to die in their unfaithfulness, man. The most high going to put you to death for being a spiritual fornicator. You know what I'm saying? For being a spiritual adulterer, man. Following for all these doctrines and philosophies. Following the customs of Babylon. Thinking it's cool to go sell your body. Or thinking it's cool to go rob your brother, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't know where it was at, but I seen like a footage, some footage. Where these guys went to the studio. I think it was in New York or somewhere. They, these guys rung on the doorbell, went to the studio. Soon as uh, the young man opened the door, they just started shooting, man. Big ass guns they had. So lucky for the language, they had big guns. And they shooting this boy. You know what I'm saying? Our people are destroyed out here, man. Envy not these people. These people walk around bragging how about, about they walk around bragging about how many bodies they got, man. How many, how many brothers and sisters they done killed. You know what I'm saying? So be mindful, man, because all of them are gonna die in their unfaithfulness. They walking contrary to the Lord, so the Lord gonna walk contrary unto them in these last days, right? So let me get the book of Proverbs. Let's read chapter one. Chapter one, and I'm gonna start at verse four. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter one and verse four, and it reads. To give subtility to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. So that's what we are here to do. We are here to shine light on our people. If you are wicked, we're trying to give you knowledge, man, understanding, correction, right? Verse four again, to give subtility to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb in the interpretation, the words of the wise in their dark sayings. Verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions, man. So these evil these evil men, these sinners that you're envious of, they, they fools because they despise instruction. They despise wisdom. Envy not these people, man. Envy not these heathens of the other nations. Envy not the, uh, the two-thirds. You know what I'm saying? Don't follow a multitude to do evil in these last days, man. It ain't worth it, right? Let me go to Zechariah chapter 13 and 8. Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8. Because a lot of our people got to get put to death, man. They not hearkening to the prophets. They not hearkening to the Lord, you know. Just make sure you keep your lamp burning, your oil, your oil and your lamp. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be destroyed like these two third individuals, right? So this is um, Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8. And it reads, And it shall come to pass that in all the land, said Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein, right? Two parts of our people, two thirds of our people are gonna be cut off and die because they not hearkening to the Lord. They blinded by the God of this world. They serve in sin. You know what I'm saying? They walking contrary to the heavenly father. Pimps, hoes, thoughts, you know what I'm saying? Drug lords, you know what I'm saying? The God mother, you know, people that's pushing drugs to the community. People that spread in all type of wickedness in the community, witchcraft in the community. Those people are going to be cut off and die. People that are following the customs of this whore Babylon, man. This place glorifies prostitution and wants you to be a prostitute. We don't need our women to, to, to fall victim to this society, man. We got to wake them up. We got to go read Zechariah 13 and 8 and tell you, hey, man, two thirds of our people are going to die. You don't want to be a part of that number. You want to be a one-third individual, man. The dragon is not making war with those that are not keeping the commandments. 
he making war with those that are keeping the commandments and the faith in Christ. You know what I'm saying? So uh, verse nine, it reads, and I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say, Yahweh is my power, man. That that's what you are more, you, that's what you should be focused on. Being put through the fire and, and, and coming out as fine gold, man. And getting the glory of the kingdom, the riches of the kingdom. You should be storing your treasures up in heaven, not here on earth. Now those other people that you don't need to be envious of, the sinners, that's gonna be the two two thirds of the ones that's gonna be cut off and die in these last days, man. So don't envy the wicked, right? So let me go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 63. And I'm going to start at verse, verse 3, and it reads, I'm going to start at verse 2. This is uh, Isaiah 63 and verse 2. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, because he red because of the blood, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? So his garments is like him that treadeth in the wine fat, man. Stepping on grapes. Verse 3, I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will and I will stain all my raiment, man. Hamashaki, how Yahweh shall I say he coming back to tread the wine press, meaning his garments are finna be bathed in blood, man. It's gonna look it's gonna look like he did a massacre when he get done treading the treading on the wicked. When he done slaying the wicked, man. Christ is coming back for vengeance, for bloodshed, man. He's coming back for blood. Right? So why are you envying these people who are going to be treaded and slaughtered by the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, man? Why be envious of those people? You know, it's pointless, man. You focus on your riches stored in heaven, man, and the glory of the kingdom. That's all you should be focused on in these last days. You know what I'm saying? Let me go to the book of Revelation, chapter 19. Revelation, chapter 19. And I'm going to start at verse 12, man. This is the book of Revelation, Revelation, chapter 19, and verse 12, and it reads, His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head was many crowns, and he had my name written, that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of the Most High. Right? Verse 13 again. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, man, because he's going to have blood on his garments, man, when he returned for slaying the wicked. And his name was called the Word of the Most High, man. That's Christ. That's Hamashiach Yahawashah. Right? Verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth go up a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of his fierceness and wrath of the almighty power. And he have on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, man. He gonna tread the winepress. He finna dance in the blood of the wicked. Christ not coming back to play no type of games with none of these people. With none, of the, with none of the two-thirds or the heathen nations. So you got to be grateful and you got to be wise to not covetous or envy or be jealous of the wicked. They have a bitter end. Right? So all glory to the Heavenly Father. Be not envious of the wicked, man. Don't worry about what these other people are doing, man. You just stay focused on that straight and narrow path. Stay focused on your walk. Stay girded. Gird up the loins of your mind. Apply these scriptures. Meditate on them daily, man. So you'll be able to stand the wiles of the devil. That's a wile of the devil to have you envying the wicked, man. Having you jealous of wicked people. For what? The Most High is finna sl slay them with his work, with his law. And he finna slay them with the sword, man. Right? And with that being said, I'd like to give all praise and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shabarakata. It's H-O-I Orlando. It's H-O-I to the cherries fly. Shalom, Yasharalam.